Well, the National Association of Realtors Economists says we will not see a major decline in house prices in 2023. Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We try to make sense of this crazy Arizona market, and we're going to take a look at what uh, the chief, one of the chief economists for the National Association of Realtors is saying about next year. And remember, this is prediction season, so this is going to start coming at us fast and furious as we start approaching January. Every economic real estate guru out there is going to say, we're going to be up, we're going to be down, we're going to be sideways. He said... They won't experience major declines. Now, why is that? And one of the things that he says, and get my handy dandy little magnifying glass out here. However, Young noted that today's market conditions are fundamentally different than those experienced during the Great Recession. Distressed property sales are almost non existent at just 2% and nowhere near the 30% mark seen during the housing crash. Short sales are almost impossible because of the significant price increases of the past few years. And that is true. We're not seeing that. We're going to go over some of those Arizona numbers here and see what matches up with what he is, is telling us. But uh, what's really going on is that we've had these major price increases over the past three years. People are sitting on a lot of equity. That's You know that. So we've seen that and gone over that several, year to several times. And he said that signs point that mortgage rates are topping out, particularly as October's consumer price index, index showed inflation rising less than expected. And that's what happened last Thursday. And we saw rates come down. Now, I caution everybody, because this is going to be a volatile market going into the first quarter here, that it, there's, it's very likely that we're going to see rates go down and they're going to pop back up and everybody's going to go, here we go again, then they're going to go down. So it's really going to be hard to follow to get a general direction for interest rates in the short term. Now, is this guy right? Well, we won't know until the end of 2023. So... Um, they weren't right last year. I can't remember how far off they were. But but this is what we're seeing right now in active listing counts in Arizona. And we're, today we're at 20,300, which is about 400 less than last week. But it's expected because we're getting into the holidays. See each one of these numbers, how they go down as you reach the first part of November. They just tend to go down because of the holidays. And they go up in January. But... 2019 is probably the year that you can look at and say, well, that while we can't call it normal, we can say, let's see if there's any comparisons to 2019. Here's the interesting one. Now, this says November 1st, but I've noticed that the Cromford people don't update this um, on a daily basis. So they come out with it looks like a November report and a December report. So it's going to say November 1, but the data is actually today and you can see the supply and demand index finally crossed right here and it hasn't crossed in a major way like it did here so that's something that we want to watch we want to see if the demand is falling way below supply and we just aren't seeing that right now and one of the reasons now is is this um, you can see here that mortgage rates cranked out at 6.65 now and they were at 7.25 just a short week ago. So that's a huge improvement in mortgage rates. And uh, whether or not that's sustainable, I don't know. We've already seen a slight, tiny uptick in sales, I believe, due to these low interest rates. And I don't even want to use the word low because compared to what we were paying, 6.65 is pretty high. So you remember in May, we went from 3, 3.5 to 6 and the wheels fell off the wagon. So now mentally we're going, oh, man, it's only 6.65. Still high in comparison to home prices. That is causing a pullback from buyers because of affordability. So home prices have been coming down, but they haven't been coming down at an alarming rate. Um, a couple of other things that we're also seeing that I want to share with you is we're not seeing as many price changes on a weekly basis. See how they're coming down? See how many price changes we had here in October? And the ones that we had back here in July? These are price reductions coming in, and now there aren't as many. Well, why is that? Well, one of the reasons is we're seeing an increase 
in the amount of seller contributions. So in lieu of dropping their price, they're offering concessions. They're offering either money at closing for you to buy down your rate, or they're just offering to pay your closing costs. But uh, many, many home sellers now are putting their home on the market, and if it's not moving, they're just sitting on it and saying, well, I don't think I'm going to lower the price. I'm just going to kind of hang here and see see what happens. But the uh, average sales price that we have going on right now, it's not falling off the face of the earth. And here it is right now. You can see that we did come down, but now we went up from, oh, 279 a square foot in September to 282 in November. Now, if we were in a severely declining market, this line would keep coming down. And it could. It could turn here and come down, or it could flatten out. But you don't know unless you watch it. And you certainly don't want to be watching it on a weekly basis. You'll uh, drive yourself crazy. So the market is in a zone right now where we're just frozen. We're in a zone where buyers are saying, I'm sitting it out. I'm waiting. But let me caution buyers as you go into 2023 that you're really not going to know when we've hit the bottom. You don't know we've hit a bottom until three or four months after it's happened. So if you're waiting for that bell to ring, like Pat and I always talk about, you're probably not going to see it. And the bottom will come at a time when everybody's very, very pessimistic about housing. You're going to be reading the headlines that housing has declined, if housing prices do decline. Um, money's hard to get, and everything's just negative. And uh, we're down to 1,900 sales over a seven-week period. Well, we're at 2,200 now, and we haven't dipped below 2,200 for the past few months. So how much dire can it get on the sales side? What has to happen for prices to come flying down now is inventory to take a huge spike up. And we're not seeing that, as I showed you in this chart right here. We're sitting here at 19,000. Now, remember in 2008 when we were looking at some of this data, and this chart won't let me take you back to 2008, but we had 58,000 homes on the market at a time when buyers could no longer buy because the mortgage market had collapsed. Many of them walked away from their homes, and that caused 30,000 pre-foreclosures. So in that 58,000 number of homes that were on the market, Many of them were foreclosures, but then behind that was 30,000 pre-foreclosures, 80,000 homes available on the market. The pre-foreclosures uh, weren't hitting the MLS yet, but remember, 80,000 homes out there and sales were at the same what they are now, 2,200 a week. Now we're at 2,200 a week with 20,000 homes on the market, 20,600, 20,300, and flat. So there isn't a spike if we end up with a big spike, then we're going to have some major price decreases. Right now, the difference between new listings coming on board and homes going under contract is a difference of about 1,000 homes a week. So we're putting on about 3,200 new homes every week, which is declining. Every week it's going down. And we're writing 2,200 contracts. So as long as there's a gap, there's no pricing pressure. And we're seeing prices come down, but we're not seeing them crash. That's a normal adjustment. And this would be very welcome over the long term now if we can just maintain this status as a slow and orderly reduction of prices, then we could see at the end of 2023 an actual favorable market. One of the things that we see out there though is that there's so much pent up demand of people waiting to buy homes that any favorable move in interest rates will put contracts back up. Look what I'm doing with my hands here. We're going to have more sales come up. We already see that the sweet spot is 5.5%. If we get down to 5.5, the buyers get off the fence. So as we look to next year, we've got to see what happens. Now the Fed is coming out and they're starting to deliver mixed messages now. Well, the Fed chairman says we weren't going hard enough and fast enough or long enough, so we're going to stay the course. We're going to do it faster and we're going to do it longer when it comes to raising rates. Now you've got some of them saying, well, we may not have to clamp down as hard as we thought we would. So there's going to be mixed messages going in now until the December meeting. December meeting, if they go up 0.75, the bond market might just blow them off and go, yeah, whatever. Uh, we're still going to buy bonds. We think the inflation uh, numbers are getting better. 
So I'll have to continue to watch that because there's definitely some dangers out there that these inflation numbers are not going to get better. Uh, in certain categories, it doesn't look like they're getting better. So that's way above my pay grade. All I can do is share those numbers for you here. Be sure and subscribe and hit the like button and I'll bring you more data. Take care. Have a great week.